Welcome back to the Knitting Nursing Student Podcast. This is episode number eight, and today is Wednesday, February 10th. Uh, first and foremost, happy Black History Month. It's always important, even though it's the shortest month of the year. Um, this episode is definitely going to be a little shorter than the last one, mainly because I didn't get a ton of... Well, I feel like I got like a normal amount of stuff done, not nearly as much as for episode seven. Um, but I feel like I've been bit by the cross stitch bug. Um, by the way, this is a uh, primarily a knitting podcast, but I also cross stitch, so I thought that I would feature it um, in these videos as well. So uh, lately I've been a bit by the stitching bug and I've done quite a bit of cross stitching and not like a ton of knitting. Um, I feel like lately they've been pretty equal whereas before I would stitch kind of occasionally and I would knit primarily. So like always let's get started. Um, first let's show some of my knitting. So I didn't work on all of the whips that I showed last episode but if you are interested in seeing those, I will put an eye um, up in the corner to link to that video. Um, and since I, I typically don't show off anything that I didn't make any progress on or that I didn't work on. So I'm not going to show every single whip in this video because I didn't work on everything. Um, but I think we should start with some finished objects. Um, I finished these. A couple of weeks ago but I forgot to show them in the last episode so let me go grab them. Okay so some of you might remember when I talked about um, wanting to make a pair of leg warmers so I finished them. Um, these are like the French leg warmers is a pretty basic pattern. Um, it's like ooh, it's like knitting for a few uh, rounds and then purling and knitting and purling and knitting. Um, the pattern is completely free. It's not a Ravelry download or anything. It's just um, like on the website but I think I did explain how I like turn uh, patterns like from a blog into a PDF. Basically you can like print the entire web page um, since the whole thing on a blog is typically um, like all on one page you can like right click or like if you're on mobile you can hit the three um hit the three like dots in the corner to open up like the menu and um you can print to the web page and instead of printing it you will select save to pd save as a pdf and just save it in your remote files so that's what I tend to do because I like to use Knit Companion for all of my knitting patterns um, just to help keep track of them and uh, so that I can like mark my place and use the row counters that they have. So these are finished. I didn't weave in the ends yet because I, I mean I haven't worn them yet um, but I think now that I have them out again I'm going to wear them probably hopefully next week it's been really cold here lately um I live in central Illinois and for those of you who uh are who might be aware who might not be aware I guess um there's like this winter surge I think it's called like going across most of the midwest and like the north so it's been really cold here the last week um it's been in the teens mostly and it's supposed to get a lot colder this weekend so I'm not too happy about that <laughs> but what I what are you gonna do I've been wearing just like snow boots every day for the last like week and a half it's not very fun but oh well okay so next I want to show you I've actually made quite a bit of progress in 
my uh, Hufflepuff scarf. Let me untangle these. <laughs> Because even though I made progress on it, I didn't really work on it yesterday. So it's kind of like a little uh, tangled in itself. Um, the scarf is knit helically with two different colored yarns. And it's knit in the round because it's fingering weight. And as I just mentioned, it gets really cold here. So I wanted it to be doubled. Um, so... This is what it looks like. Uh, this is like pretty mindless knitting for me because it's just stockinette. So I have been uh, knitting it while I like rewatch my lectures, while I watch like lesson videos for school. Um, if I'm watching like TV that I actually need to pay attention to and look at, I'll work on this because I can, for the most part, knit this without really looking. So it's really nice. Um, it's been really fun to work on. I'm loving how it's turning out. Last video, I mentioned that this yarn by itself looks a little more green than I wanted it to, but um, I think that it is working with this color. So I'm I'm pretty happy with this. And also I think it'll really come together when I add the like two ends um when I started this sweater the first time I wasn't sure if I wanted to have like contrasting like and like contrasting colors on each end of the scarf like some scarves typically have uh if they're knit back and forth they might have like a like if both ends are ribbed in a contrasting color um but I ended up deciding that I did want to do that so in the end I'm going to pick up uh, these stitches here um, at the very bottom after like I've knit all the way up with um, all of my like regular colored yarn with all my main colors and I have two 50 gram skeins of knit pictorial fingering and I believe it's called Midnight Heather so I'm going to use one of each on like either end and it's not going to be like the whole 50 grams because I do plan, I have three skeins of this and um, only two skeins of this. So because they're not helically, they have to be the same yardage. So I'm going to use the extra skein of this like black and uh, yellow yarn to make a matching pair of socks for this. I think that'll be so cute. Um, and it also ties in with my rainbow sock chronicles for the yellow I think that's in April um which I'll talk about a little bit later when I uh talk about my sock progress um so I want to make a matching pair of socks so the contrasting colors for the heels toes and cuffs are going to be in the midnight heather I'm just going to use one ball of one ball for each sock of the midnight heather and so that should help keep them even so I'm really excited for that, but I can't cast them on quite yet. And I, I mean, even if it wasn't like against the rules, I still wouldn't because they don't have the needles <laughs> for it. So, um, let's move into another shawl that I've been working on. Uh, so those of you my some of you guys might remember last week, last week, last episode, um, I talked about knitting a like lace shawl the illumine shawl um with like lace weight and with two lace weight yarns held double um to make fingering and I kind of messed up my cast on I was supposed to do a setup row and I went right into the uh lace so it just didn't really look quite right because there was supposed to be a border for it so um, I just ripped it out because it was only a few rows and I started instead something a little bit easier. Um, this is called the Kalara Wrap. This is all I've got, um, but I am really loving this actually. So I'm just using this bare uh, fingering weight, 100% merino. 
Um, this is just undyed single ply yarn. And then this is also 100% merino uh, single ply yarn. This is called Infrared. It is from, oh, I forget the yarn dyer, but I will uh, link her shop in the description. Um, she was having a, I think a Black Friday sale. So I snagged this. This is a one of a kind skein. So I cannot wait to use more of this. I'm so excited for this shawl. Um, I might work on it more today after I get some schoolwork done. So I'm really excited for that. Um, for this, this is my, let me just uh, pull it out. <laughs> so this is my Kalara, no, my Inara wrap. Um, both of these patterns are, I believe, by the same designer. If not, I sincerely apologize, but um, all of the patterns that I have ever mentioned on this channel are going to be um, linked in my link haven. I finally finished it, so I'm going to share that Google Doc and link it in every single description from now on and update it as I go. So this is my Inara wrap. Uh, it's knit on the it's knit on the bias. Uh, I started the lace, but the lace was a little bit complicated. So I and I was also really wanting to work on my hue shift afghan, which I did not work on at all, despite moving my needles. That's why I have these stoppers at the end. So uh, yeah, so I am putting this away. Just for a little bit I kind of want to work on something a little bit easier since I am working on like two kind of wraps or scarves already I want to put this away just for a little while because this is a little bit complicated and I do need to really pay attention to it um, also the yarn that I'm using is really loosely plied so I have to be careful with it so I really don't want it to get tangled with anything else because as you all know, I don't really use project bags, even though I probably should. Um, I might use some scrap yarn that I have some like worsted or bulky weight uh, scraps to knit a few project bags, just like some small ones at least. So um, either that or I'll just buy like a set of drawstring bags from Amazon. But I really want to use scraps. I hate having scraps just sitting there but I don't want to throw them away or anything and I mean I don't know I, I guess you can use them as waste yarn but then what are you going to do when the waste when you pull out the waste yarn you know it's just it's a lot but um so I have two sweaters in the works right now um I ripped out my what is it called my Mayan Sun sweater because it was too small and I just like was not loving working on it so instead I started knitting the the spring lineup sweater um and this is so cute oh my gosh when I saw the like model picture I had to have it like if I saw it in a store I would just buy it without even thinking about like trying to decipher what pattern they use because this is so beautiful and basically um at the halfway point of each like section you let me try to pull this a little bit at the halfway point of each section um you do yarn over increases so it's technically raglan because you are doing increases um two increases for each like section but they're at the halfway point and so it's like um eyelets going all the way down and it's so pretty and then there's these like contrasting stripes um it calls for two contrast colors but I'm just using one because this is like bright orange I feel like I want it I want the main color to stand out a lot more so the main color is uh the Audion Wool's Interlock in Pigment I bought five of these from Knit Crate there should be more than enough to make this sweater and then for the contrast color, I have um, the Taki Yarns Classic Cotton in the colorway Navy Blue. Um, this was from my color black sweater that I designed at Animal Crossing New Horizons. 
the original one but I wasn't liking how the like cotton was falling um because I wanted it to fit a certain way I wanted it to drape a certain way and the cotton just did not really allow that so I ended up buying wool um to make it with it's 100% wool I would prefer a wool blend or a superwash wool because um for larger gar garments I'd rather just throw them in the washing machine and hang them to dry but that's fine I just need to remember or like maybe um I might sew a tag on it to say like at the bottom to say um hand wash only I know I can buy like um like those handmade tags or like snaps I think a snap would probably be a little bit better for me because I hate sewing <laughs> Um, but like I already know what pattern I'm going to use. I know like how I'm going to do everything. I just have not cast on the sweater because I already have two in on my needles on the go. So I'm probably going to finish the body of one and then um, go ahead and cast the color block sweater on. So my next, ooh, my next sweater that you guys are probably sick of looking at by now is the what I'm calling the purple haze sweater um this is knit using the Southwood pattern it is completely free on Ravelry as a Ravelry download uh it's a very basic like raglan sweater so I, it's great for beginners it's knit in worsted weight yarn and they tell you exactly how many stitches to cast on as well as like measurements so I think it's really great but um as you can see I am I don't know if I yeah so basically I'm like kind of back where I started the where is it this little stitch marker here um is where I like ripped where I had to rip back because I messed up um a stitch like all the way back here like right by this marker actually so that was kind of upsetting I turned back so much and now I'm finally back to where I was when I realized I made the mistake <laughs> so we are back at square one I broke even and now I'm back to where I was so I can continue to make progress on this um the way I'm like altering this pattern ever so slightly because sweaters sweater patterns have like I don't know why but I feel like sweater patterns are knit for like orangutans I don't know if I have like really short arms or something but um my first sweater that I ever knit the autumn league pullover the arm I knit it like as called for you know all the measurements and stitches um that were in the pattern and the arms are so long the arms are really long and the torso is like a little short for me but that's fine because it's oversized so it doesn't look weird or anything but like the arms are so long so to me it just looks too big as opposed to like intentionally oversized and this sweater calls for like the same, most of the same lengths. Um, I'm knitting this in the size large because I love oversized sweaters. And I it's also knit with like mohair. So I want it to be like big and fluffy so that I can wear like a tank top or a t-shirt underneath it if I wanted to. And yeah, uh, it calls for like the same length arms. So what I'm doing is... I'm just switching the length measurements for the arms and the torso uh just like from the armpit cast on that's like what they what they usually measure from um when you're knitting like a seamless sweater so yeah uh, I have quite a bit of like torso knitting left to go so I haven't measured I don't know how long the sweater is quite yet but um it's gonna be long the body is gonna be long which is like normal for me because I guess I have like kind of a long torso compared to like the rest of my body and um I have really short arms <laughs> so um this is knit 
double with this is knit with two yarn tail double this is the audine wolf interlock uh from knit pick in the colorway haze and then this is the um hobby diablo mohair in the colorway 59 oh and for my hufflepuff sweater sweater for my hufflepuff scarf um i don't remember what the black and navy or or the yellow and navy uh yarn is called but i do know that it's from a chick that knits with a z uh it's all one word she has a shop on etsy that's where i bought them and the other yarn is the i have it right here actually uh this yarn is the uh knit picks hawthorne fingering in the colorway city lights speckle So, um, there's that. There's all the yarns that, like, I can name off the top of my head. Um, if I list something, if I say something wrong or anything like that, um, and I don't correct it either in the video or in the description, um, please leave a comment, let me know, and I'll go ahead and fix it. Okay, so, um... I have like a couple of other things to show you before we move on into the Rainbow Sock Chronicles. <laughs> so, um, I don't know if like any of like other people who are in school for like healthcare field or anything. Um, I don't know if you guys have to do this, but basically my nursing program has like a philanthropic component and we have to do like service learning hours we have to do 20 of them um over our four semesters as a graduation requirement so um my original plan was to do them just do like 20 hours over the summer and then i'll be done and you know i could do my last year of school without having to worry about that. Well, this, like last summer, never really happened. And a lot of stuff is so closed, uh, for volunteers at least. <laughs> so, um, what I've had to do is basically like talk to my, uh, advisor and be like, Hey, nothing's open. I don't really know what to do. Can I just like, like I can knit. So can I just like knit some stuff? and send it off to like an organization or donate it and you can send off on it. She was like, yeah, sure. That's fine. So, um, I am knitting for the organization called warm up America exclamation point. Um, and basically what they mainly ask for are these like nine in were these seven inch by nine inch square rectangles. They're not squares, they're rectangles. <laughs> Um, and I'm just like setting a like timer stopwatch thing on my phone when I knit these. And this first one, these are knit with the, the Lion brand. It's like the super bulky yarn, the Lion brand, um, hundred percent acrylic. I don't remember what the actual line is called. Um, but I'll look it up and, you know, write down the entire, uh, line of yarn in the description. So I knit this first square with size 10 needles, which was way too small. As you can see, it's like stiff as a board. It's like, yeah, really stiff. Um, I haven't woven in any of my ends. I'll probably do that at the very end. This took me like two and a half hours to knit. What? This took me two and a half hours to knit because I did not look at I don't have the labels for them anymore they're just like wound because um the yarn was a gift for like secret santa uh a tip for you crafters out there don't ever tell like your secret santa that you about your craft because they'll just get you some cheap stuff not that lion not that, like the lion brand stuff is cheap but like <sighs> I feel like whenever I like do a secret santa and I say that I knit they like go to Michael's or Walmart and get me like this like super chunky yarn that I have no use for. And it's like one skein of each color, 
which is like not to like knock them like I know they're doing their best and they're trying but like just give me a Joanne's gift card <laughs> just give me a gift card but anyways um yeah if any of you guys have like crafty friends or family members and they do things that like you don't really do just give them a gift card please or like ask them to send you a list with links and coupon codes because <laughs> that's what I do but anyways this took me like two and a half hours to make because uh, I did it with size 10 needles which is way too small so I wrote that in a log and I wrote a note saying basically saying like oh my needles were too small it took me longer and um I think another reason why was because I was also trying to figure out the so I'm knitting these uh as you can see in the diagonal and garter stitch um I'm like increasing evenly uh two stitches on both sides on the right side and then just knitting into them on the wrong side sorry I don't know if you can see that and um once I get to like seven inches on either side increasing evenly I start to knit on the bias so that one side will turn a corner and the other side will keep going and whichever side and then I'll just keep going on the bias for like two inches until the longest side measures nine inches and then I'll do even decreases to finish it off. So that's how I have been doing it. I finished two rectangles. Um, I'm not really worried about like how pretty they look because they're going to be so the way that they work they ask for seven by nine rectangles because they like sew them together into like different sized afghans uh, which honestly makes my job a lot easier because I am not going to knit an entire blanket <laughs> not that like I don't know I just don't really love knitting blankets like all at once uh, they take me a really they take a really long time they take a lot of yarn and they're just kind of like cumbersome uh, especially since like I'm on a bit of a time crunch so these are a lot easier and a lot more motivating for me to work on um and I started working on a third one uh the second one only took me an hour and a half which is what I expected them to take between one to two hours each with like bulky yarn um I don't have enough of this super bulky yarn to knit all of them but I do have some like scraps some like worsted weight scraps that I could use so I'm just gonna use whatever yarn I can because I don't really want to buy anymore I'm, I'm on a no buy for yarn um and I think as soon as I said that <laughs> as soon as I said that I like I'm getting so many like beautiful yarn dyers suggested in my Instagram feed <sighs> so it's really hard to resist but I am resisting I have not bought anything yet um I might shorten my no buy until <laughs> I graduate and like start working um like a full-time like nursing job because I think part of the reason I wanted to do the no buy is one because I don't have like any space left and two because I really don't have the budget to keep buying more yarn um so yeah <laughs> I might shorten it I don't think it'll be all of 2021 especially since I'm moving um in August uh that's when the lease for this place is up so we'll see what happens in like six months <laughs> okay so now we can move on to some socks uh, let me get a drink of water real quick okay <clears throat> so I did not finish my sock if I was knitting one sock at a time I probably would have <laughs> um in like the time that I had but oh goodness <laughs> Next time I knit two at a time, I'm just going to split the ball up, honestly. But um, I got up to the heel of my first sock. This sock, um, the yarn is being pulled from the center, so I call this sock one. And I got up to the heel. I like moved my needles over so that the yarn 
the working yarn is on the side so that I can start working my contrast heel in the white. And I'm just like making my way up to the heel on this sock so that I can do essentially just both heels at the same time, like, well, not at the same time, in tandem, one after the other. And then I'll work on the, um, the legs. Um, I'm knitting these in, in a slip stitch pattern um, because it's easy. I don't want to slip my yarn ever. <laughs> and it looks really pretty. I think it would look nicer if it was like tonal or slightly variegated, but Knit Crate has not been like sending out any kind of like interesting yarns lately um it's like all just completely solid with like maybe Stellina in it and like that's it so um I really want March and I kind of want February I mean I already paid for February so there's no going back now um but I kind of like March and February just the colors so I can probably like find a nice pattern to work them up in and then if April is like still the same boring solid yarn then I'm just gonna skip it until they start putting out something more interesting and I'm kind of like looking at other yarn box subscriptions right now so we'll see I don't know Knit Crate just has not been cutting it lately um oh I didn't even tell you what yarn this was this is the Uru yarn uh I don't know it's like from Uru Yarns and it's called Bubblegum. Um all the yarn and um like project details are my project pages on Ravelry and those are also in my link haven in the description. Um so yeah uh this was I think January January or December's yarn. This was December's yarn because I show January off in my on my Instagram so yeah I don't know it's just like I'm bored I don't, I don't really have anything else to say I'm just bored with Knit Crate right now um the only reason I'm getting the colors for this month and next month is because they're really bright and they're I think the colors themselves are pretty I don't have those colors um right now so I feel like I might as well like it's really inexpensive it's like $20 um it's like $20 for a skein um and I thought about just skipping it and then buying it on a double down sale when it goes in their shop but I didn't really think about that oh well um so this oh duh oh my god I didn't even talk about the Rainbow Sock Chronicles. These socks are my January Rainbow Sock Chronicle socks. It's being hosted by So Sweet Violet and also someone else whose name I don't remember. But I will link the uh, Ravelry group and like the forum and everything in the description. Um, so the light pink like slip stitch socks are for January. Uh, January's color was light pink and February is like dark pink slash red. So I thought that this would be perfect. Um, this is also a knit crate yarn. I'm sure I'll show you the whole thing. This is a knit crate yarn. Um, I don't remember what brand the yarn is, but it is the colorway is called Peony. I don't think they sell it anymore. I know they don't sell it anymore because I was looking um, through their shop just the other day. <laughs> but yeah, they don't sell this anymore. Like you can't really get it anywhere anymore. This was from like early 2020, I believe, or like late 2019. Uh, I don't entirely remember, but it's from a while ago. And I thought it was so perfect. And I'm using this um dark gray yarn that i also got in knit crate but i don't remember like who it's from exactly or what the color is called um but i think it's in my stash uh on ravelry and i'm going to knit these socks brioche two color brioche the pink is like the 
main color and then the gray is gonna be the contrast color and I think it'll be so pretty I think it'll be so pretty oh my gosh I can't wait I only have this much of the toe done I did this like in just one sitting and then I put it down because I realized I really needed to work on the January socks so hopefully by the middle of the month I'll have my January socks done and then my February socks I can really um like focus on and then yeah so the rainbow sock chronicles it's like this year-long knit along um and like each month is a different color so you knit socks in the color for the month and if you finish your socks by the end of the month then you can enter for prizes i don't really care about prizes i just want some incentive to knit <laughs> that's all i really want it's the only reason i do like knit alongs or stitch alongs is just for the incentive i don't really care too much about the price unless like the prize itself is more supplies to knit or stitch <laughs> which like it isn't always a lot of times it's accessories which is fine but i don't care too much about accessories all that much obviously <laughs> i use like safety pins as stitch markers and i have i don't have project bags <laughs> but you know that's fine um, so that's all the knitting that I have to show you guys today. Um, I'm going to pause, clean up my knitting, and we're going to get started on showing off some cross stitch. So I will see you guys in just a second. Okay, so um, I have all my cross stitch stuff. So if you're just here the knit for the knitting and you don't care about cross stitch, um, thank you so much for watching and sticking with me this long. Um, <clears throat> so, <laughs> um, first I want to show you my largest piece, which is the Epic Pokemon Cross Stitch All Generations. Um, as you can see, I made, well, I don't know if you can actually see it, but I made like a decent amount of progress. I am 20% of the way done with this page, which ends, the bottom of the page is like these bottom stitches here and the edge is like over here and then over here obviously um and I knit knit oh my gosh I stitched like most of the white there's three whites in this uh pattern there is um Blanc uh 5200 and 3865 um, it's stitched all in DMC. I'm using all the called four colors. I realize I don't have Blanc. So I am gonna, I'm waiting for that to come. I'm waiting for like all my colors to come in. So we'll have to see what happens uh, there. <laughs> and we'll just have to wait and see like what happens there. But um, yeah, I feel like I got a decent amount done. As I said, I'm 20% of the way through the um 20 percent of the way through the page and i finished three colors on this page so i'm very excited um the reason i am stitching it page by page like very strictly page by page is because the top left uh like section quadrant of the entire pattern um, does not work in pattern keeper so I basically have to like go to the page <laughs> that I need um, take a screenshot convert that screenshot to a PDF put it into pattern keeper so I can mark my stitches and it's just gonna be like it's just like the grids that I mark off like it's not gonna read the pattern or anything and that's like the only way that I can make it work so that I can actually see all of the um symbols because it just doesn't work in pattern keeper um another whip that i have is where is it the front here my dark queen of the seas um i'm still working on the fish here but i'm on the third one i finished the middle one and the um the second fish except for the eyes that's a little creepy you don't have to look <laughs> um but yeah i like started here and i did a little bit of 
like the shadow on her body here just because I was getting a little bit bored and yeah so that's like all I really have completed um I took a picture and posted it on Instagram when I moved my cue snap after I finished the back stitching on these two fish and I really want to finish this one here because I'm pretty sure I have all the room to do it so um hopefully by next episode I will have that and I'll really be working in part two which is her body I know I'm like super behind but I didn't start this till like late January so really am I that behind <laughs> yes I am okay um I think that's oh yeah so that's all I worked on in terms of like whips that you guys have already seen um but uh I'm gonna show you the whole like stand because I don't feel like unscrewing everything <laughs> but I did start a new uh stamped cross stitch and it is this um this is the it's one of three panels so it's huge um it's these ginkgo leaves it's like a triptych so the two side panels are like these ginkgo leaves and then the middle are the deer and it's like really beautiful i think the original artwork is like um made of paper like it's not a painting i'm not entirely sure but like i just bought this off aliexpress and it's stitched using uh silk <laughs> It's not really silk I'm pretty sure it's just like satin uh, dyed in like DMC colors but you know it's working um, I don't think I love using satin I've never used real silk before but I don't know if I would love it because I think I prefer one thing I like about cotton is that it sticks to itself and it's like it feels secure and I feel like when I especially when I like um end my threads I am so scared that they're going to just like slip out, especially since I have to wash this piece when I'm finished. So I'm really nervous. <laughs> I'm really nervous. <laughs> um, also, I am stitching this uh, with two strands. It's on 11 count. Um, it calls for three, but I'm only using two because I hate, I realized I hate using like a pin stitch and like stitching with odd numbers of threads um, with like the satin silk floss so that's just what I have decided to do and I'll have a ton left over so that'll be fun um second new start is a, is a teeny one um having an earth designs was having a sale uh they were having like a valentine's day sale like at the beginning of February I think it ended on the 8th eighth sixth I don't remember it was an even number that's all I know um so I bought a couple of patterns um I bought one of them I haven't started the other one I did uh I bought the super size max color I'm awful <laughs> I bought the super size max color a stitching shelf by Amy Stewart um and yeah it's almost as big as my I think it's about the same size as my epic Pokemon all generations cross stitch so I like do not know like <laughs> like what am I gonna find the time to stitch all this and I knit and I diamond oh, goodness whatever I'm here for a good time not a long time <laughs> anyways uh the other pattern that I started is called um quick stitch iris which is really tiny it's like it's like 150 by like 170 something stitches it's like super small and it's so cute I like barely started it I got exactly 50 stitches in and then I stopped because I it's not fully kitted I don't have all the colors so I just stopped <laughs> um because I think the third color that is supposed to go like next to this little block here um, I don't have it's 161 
so I'm just gonna wait for that to come in and basically I'm like color completing columns and I think it'll be fine I don't know it's small it should be done quick once I have all the colors so I'm excited for this I started marking off like where my page ended but um the page ends like between stitches and I didn't feel like counting so I didn't do that I changed my mind but yeah so I'm really excited to stitch this uh I I think this will be done like soonish uh and I really want to frame it I can't wait to put this in like a cute little frame and like I don't know maybe put it in the kitchen of my wherever it is I'm gonna be living <laughs> so I'm excited for that and um my third new start is just a little bit bigger um it doesn't take off this whole piece of fabric like this piece of fabric is huge this is left over from my epic pokemon all generations um but i started stitching uh capricorn in here um i am making my way through purchasing and stitching all of let me move you a little closer I'm like working my way through stitching and like purchasing all of um Josephine Wall's Zodiac patterns because I love having full sets because <laughs> I'm ridiculous. Um so I did not get very far in this. As you can see, I still have a bit of thread left um on my needle, which is up here. I committed a little bit of a stitching sin, but don't tell anyone. I just didn't have enough needle minders <laughs> and it's like up in the corner I gave myself plenty of margin because this piece of fabric is huge and I'm not going to use nearly all of it but oh well so yeah um I just got this first color done I actually have most of the colors for this pattern at least for the background so I will be able to like make my way through it which is really exciting um and I didn't, yeah, I didn't even finish my thread. Again, I got exactly 50 stitches and then I stopped. Because 50 stitches does a new start make. And I just wanted it started. <laughs> so I could put it on my whip go board. Especially because, I don't know, in my mind, like, if it's not kitted up, then it's not really started. But if it is kitted up, like if I buy a kit, like there to me there isn't much of a difference between having a full kit ready to go and um like a whip because like like the difference really is like a few stitches put in like you have everything you need you can start it at you can start it at any time like I feel the same way about diamond paintings like some diamond paintings come um with the drills already like in baggies so I consider those whips because I can literally pull out the entire box and just start it wherever I am. I don't have to put it in like baggies myself. I don't have to put it in containers. I can just pull it out and work on it. And like that to me is the definition of a whip where I can just pull it out and work on it from wherever I am. So yeah. Um... Oh my gosh, there is literally one thing that I completely missed. Hold on. Okay, so I totally missed this, but um, I made tons of progress on Tales Told by Dead Friends. And I wanted to talk about this because um, I feel like I messed up a little bit on this. Um, I don't know if it shows up all on camera, but you can see like next to this like little dark patch here. The yellow is like slightly discolored, especially around here. And that's because um, I started doing this dark part. I started stitching on columns and then I switched to the diagonal. I started stitching this darker part here and I carried it over to this area and then down around here as well. And that was a mistake because when I went to stitch over um, those carried threads, some of the fibers pulled through to the front in the yellow and it looks a little discolored. 
Um, but I'm not gonna like, this is 32 count. I'm not ripping anything out. And it's just this top corner. So I think it'll be fine. I don't think it'll be that noticeable um, on the entire piece. But I feel like I did learn a lesson. And that's why um, for my epic Pokemon pattern, um, I am going, I'm basically trying to stitch lightest to darkest because the color key is not in DMC order. It's in like color order. Um, they're sorted by color groups. So I'm going like lightest to darkest, which is why I started with the white and like I'm starting with the whites and the beiges and stuff because um, I'm stitching cross country on that one because I don't have all the colors quite yet. <clears throat> and I think for like later, like later on, um, when I do have all the colors and it is like fully, fully kitted, I will um, stitch on the diagonal because like I can't use Pattern Keeper necessarily the way it was intended at least for like the quadrant that I'm working on which is huge it's like 70 pages <laughs> I feel like I would have um been better off like starting from the bottom left because um I don't know I feel like because all the other sections work in pattern keeper but the top left doesn't which is where I tend to start I like to start in the top left because it's like that's how like I that's how you read at least like like in English that's how you read <laughs> and like that's just how I like to read patterns and how I like to work in general um I think part of it is also because I'm a knitter first and foremost and you work like left to right do you no you work right to left what is wrong with me <laughs> you work right to anyways okay it, disregard what I just said but yeah, I don't know. This makes me a little sad, but I feel like I did learn a valuable lesson. Um, and I think with uh, stitching on the diagonal, you definitely carry a whole lot less. Um, once I get like past this area here, I will stitch on the diagonal for confetti heavy, for confetti heavy um, patterns from now on, especially ones with lots of contrasting colors. Like a stitching shelf, I probably will not start until I have it fully kitted up. And there's like 200 something colors in there. It's like 237 colors. Ugh. Anyways. <laughs> Anyways. Um, that, I believe, is all I really have to show you guys. Um, there hasn't been like too much going on with me lately. But... Um, I've just been busy. School's getting busier. I have a lot of like group projects that I'm trying to get done. Um, also, Creativity by Gage gave me a shout out in her last video. Thank you so much. Um, I really love hanging out with you and I'm so glad that you enjoyed my channel. So I'm excited to see you grow. I'm excited to grow myself. Um, and yeah, thank you so much. So, uh, yeah, there hasn't really been too much going on. Um, basically after this, I'm just gonna take a nap and get some homework done. Um, Wednesdays are like my day off, kind of. Like I don't have class or anything and I, um, I don't work either on Wednesdays. So it's just a day where I can like do anything else. Like if I want to sleep all day, I can. And if I like have an appointment or I have other things that I need to get done during the week then I do those on Wednesdays so <sighs> having a six day week is not ideal but it's what I have and it's like four months so <clears throat> oh well it's week five of school so I'm a third of the way through my semester oh my god I'm a third of the way through my, my last semester, you guys. I can't wait for this to be over. I'm ready to graduate. I'm ready to just work. Also, um, I had an interview for my nurse residency program on Monday. Um, and I got a follow-up interview. So let's hope um, 
I get this. <laughs> um, I know for like inpatient, like nursing jobs, typically you work three twelves and that sounds dangerous. Um, I cannot be left alone for four days unsupervised. That is just not going to work. So I chose like ambulatory, which is like outpatient clinic stuff as my like primary track. My, my first choice basically, um, which is you work five eights, like nine to five typical job. I think it's like eight to three or something actually, or like seven to three, something along those lines. Cause doctor's offices are not open until five. <laughs> doctor's offices are not open until five. I know that for a fact, especially the ones here. So yeah, um, that's pretty much all that I have going on right now. Um, I'm not really watching anything new, just a lot of floss tube and knitting podcasts, the usual. I watch YouTube all day, every day. Um, I was rewatching The Act yes, last night with a friend, um, but that's just because she was over. I had seen it already and we tend to talk like while the TV is on. So I didn't want to like put on anything new that I really wanted to pay attention to. So, um, yeah, I think that's pretty much it that I have going on at the moment. Um, again, I'm not really setting too many goals for myself. Um, I think my next video, I do want to finish the light pink socks for the Rainbow Sock Chronicles. And, um, yeah, but I'm not going to put any, like, too, many, too much pressure on myself because I have a lot going on. Even though I just said I, yeah, I have a lot going on. <laughs> Thank you all so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I hope you all stay safe and find joy in everything that you're making. And I will see you all in the next one. Bye.